In other words, how to cope with negative self-talk, self-doubt, and all your insecurities. Imagine that on one of your shoulders, right here, is sitting a little devil. And this devil is whispering bad things about you to you. This little devil is a toxic voice inside of your head that stops you from doing things. It's the catalyst of all the negative self-talk, self-doubt, self-criticism, and insecurities that are stopping you living your dream life and being the dream person with your dream life. But do you know what? It's time to say goodbye to that little devil. And in this video, I'm going to help you to destroy the toxic voice inside of your head and start trusting yourself that you are worthy of whatever it is that you want from life. Okay, so I have to be honest with you, and perhaps this might get some of you even disappointed, but there is no such magic thing that's just magically going to end all of your self-doubt like this. Because self-doubt is just part of human psyche. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's just gonna be there. But how you deal with it matters. The question is, should you give it so much power? Should you listen to it? This analogy that I shared with you in the beginning of this video, that self-doubt and all this negativity is like a little devil sitting on your shoulder, whispering to your ear all the bad things about you. Seeing it this way helps you to visualize how not serious all your self-doubt and negative self-talk is. Because would you really listen to some asshole sitting on your shoulder telling you bad things about you? If there would really be some, some little devil sitting on your shoulder bashing you, you wouldn't listen to it. This is how you should see negative self-doubt and self-doubt. As I mentioned, self-doubt is not gonna go anywhere. It's always gonna be there with you in your life. But how you deal with it matters. That's why you need faith. You need to be a little bit crazy and not even a bit crazy. You need to be crazy enough, delusional enough to believe into yourself, into your vision that it's gonna happen no matter what. Believe into yourself. Become so crazy, so delusional about your vision that there is no other way than for it to work out. Currently, YouTube is a very big goal of mine and of course there are days when I wake up completely drowning in self-doubt and negative self-talk. What am I doing? What am I thinking? Some random girl nobody from Finland is doing YouTube videos do I really think that I'm going to blow up someday on YouTube? Who do you think you are? Come on, wake up. I have these thoughts, but yet I just choose to keep going because I have faith and I believe into my vision. Your vision has to be greater than any of those toxic voices inside of your head. Some days you just feel like you are not good enough. And on those days you can choose do you listen to it or do you decide to just ignore it? Just let it be there and go about your day. But basically, I've noticed that self-doubt is very often connected to these things. Fear of failure, limiting beliefs, lack of confidence and the belief into your own abilities, lack of patience and yes, for females, periods. So when you're afraid of failure, obviously it's very natural to face self-doubt and negative self-talk because the last thing we want to experience as humans is to fail in life. And actually, if you have this, if you're afraid of failing, I actually recommend you checking out this video, Three Reasons Why You Should Go All In, because that's gonna talk you out of any fear of failure you might have. And then when your self-doubt and negative self-talk is connected to limiting beliefs, we all have limiting beliefs. But the nice thing about limiting beliefs is that they are not yours. They were put inside of you by someone else. They are not originally yours when you were born. So it can be some traumatic experience or it can be your mom that's been whispering your whole life that you cannot do that thing because of some reason. It can be some other person in your life, some teacher, other authority in your childhood. It can be your friends. It can be any experience in your life because we go through a lot of experiences when we grow up. We experience a lot, we see different people and many different people tell us many different things which are not necessarily true and actually it is your job to decide whether something someone else tells about you to you, whether that's true to you. You get to decide whether what the other person is telling to you about you is the truth. But obviously when we are young we're not aware of this because we're not established as a human being. So what other people tell us might hurt and it might get stuck with us. For example, I used to be a shy kid, but it's not that a kid goes around and identifies themselves as a shy kid, right? And then when I grew older already, I was still having this thought in my head that I'm shy, I'm shy, I'm shy. And that was all the time like limiting my interaction 
interactions with other people although I felt like I could be super outgoing and I could talk a lot and I could make friends and you know but then I was still having this thought in my head that I'm shy that was stopping me from being outgoing person because a shy person is not an outgoing person and it's only until I had a therapist and I said to her that yeah I'm shy and I would want to like work it through and then she was like what makes you think you are shy and then I started to think about it and I was like but don't you think I'm shy I think other people really think that I'm shy she told me that you are not shy you don't look like a shy person this is something you have yourself made yourself believe that you are a shy person so this is what I mean with limiting beliefs and then we have lack of patience and this is the most killer of any dream. When we are pursuing something, we are very often measuring our success by external validation. It might be whatever. If you're pursuing content creation, you measure your success based on the likes and views you get. As an entrepreneur, you might measure it based on how many deals you closed and so on. Whereas actually, the measure for the success should come from inside. It literally should be like, are you liking what you do? Are you happy doing what you do? Because basically, when your validation comes from internal places, it's the only way to succeed in something long term because anything you decide to do will require a lot of patience nothing great comes like this you have to work for things you want so if you start to doubt yourself and whatever you're doing the second you don't see external success you're going to most likely fail in it because you don't have patience to wait for it because those things are gonna come for sure if you keep going but if you don't have the patience to just do your thing do what you gotta do sit down and wait then you're most likely going to quit very soon because the self-doubt and the negative self-talk will be there there will be days when you're like what the hell am I doing i should quit i am not going to succeed in this i'm just delusional and in these moments it's like universe or whatever is testing you and in these moments you have to be so crazy that you're just like nope i'm not listening to that i'm just gonna do whatever i have to do and it's gonna happen and now with this also trust into your abilities and your vision will come in really handy when it comes to patience if you have this clear vision what you want for your life how you want your life to be you will have patience because you know that someday it will be there and then let's talk about periods and self-doubt yes i've noticed at least myself i've noticed that there is a clear connection between days when it's like going to be the days and self-doubt since i have noticed this to be like a really a pattern that when i have these days i tend to be more negative towards myself and doubting myself much more i've come to the realization that on these days it's better just not freaking listen to yourself you are not you when you're having your period period let's say that it's not only that the devil is sitting on your shoulder the devil possesses you on those days when it comes to imposter syndrome it really helps to like get yourself on the ground literally just acknowledge everything you've done like all the degrees you freaking have all the education you have all the knowledge you have everything you've done in your life just freaking acknowledge it and just suck it into yourself and understand that you are good enough okay you've done already so many things you've succeeded in so many things you achieved so much why do you still think you're not good enough you are freaking amazing you can do whatever you put into your head you can do it whatever gets here inside of your head gets to be also realized by you so i guess the right word for this will be gratitude keep a journal or something of your achievements and also celebrate small and big achievements because i noticed that imposter syndrome is really like connected with when you don't celebrate your wins even those small ones because we're like just oh i just got my degree that's nothing just a little thing just a degree from university nothing no it is something you freaking achieved a university degree come on celebrate it and celebrate even those smaller things smaller achievements in your life small goals it also helps to break down your big goal you have for yourself into smaller ones so you have those feelings of achievement while you're working towards a bigger goal and also you own it to yourself you have one life so how do you want to spend it no one else is going to give you the life you want no one is gonna come to your home and like hey 
I heard you're super good in this. Let's go and do this for you. You own it to yourself to recognize your own abilities and believe into yourself because no one else will unless you pay them, like your mentor. And yes, I'm not gonna lie, having a mentor helps a lot. Having a mentor or having someone to talk with with who you can really talk about your insecurities and how you feel, how you doubt yourself, your negative self-talk, all these fears you have. Having someone with who you can talk that and spar about that is important actually because sometimes you alone it's just not enough sometimes you really need that little extra push extra support for someone else and then when it comes to this toxic voice inside of you that is like super negative and telling you that you cannot do certain things ask yourself where did this come from why is it there is there some experience you experienced before where you failed at it is it that someone told it to you where does that come from honestly everything that you think of yourself and that's negative came from somewhere it's not you who believes into that. I mean, you chose to believe into it, but it's not originally yours. So acknowledging this first, that okay, whose words are those or which experience does it come from? And then after you start to have a clue, where does it come from? If it's an experience, rework that experience. Do it. Just go and do it. Don't care. Just do it, do it, do it. Rework that negative experience into a positive one. And if it's someone else's words that someone said you something and now you believe into that, start doing affirmations. Positive self-talk rework those words into good ones if it's like i suck at this say to yourself i'm good at this if you do that long enough you start to believe it of course we also have this negative self-talk which is internal when we compare ourselves to other ones let's say in some situation you're like i thought i was good but now i saw that person doing it I don't think I'm good anymore. In these situations, you're basically comparing yourself to other person, whereas you have no idea what that other person went through in order to be in the place they are. Maybe they're better. Okay, doesn't mean you suck. It's just how life is. Some people are better than you and you are sometimes better than someone else. That's just how it is. It's okay to not be the best. And also, I want you to stop looking at comparison like some completely bad thing, because it's not. It's also healthy to sometimes compare yourself other people because then you see like oh yeah I still have room for development and that's good that's not a negative thing and if you need more help on how to stop comparing yourself with other people I have another video on that which is more comprehensive on this topic and I will link it up here and then sometimes we also have insecurities that are so bad that they stop us from doing something here what I found to be really helpful is to ask yourself how bad do you want it is this insecurity now more important than what you want because if we really dig deep to the insecurity why or insecurity stop us from doing something if we really dig deep it's because we are afraid to look foolish we are afraid to lose our face so to say it's always connected to this feeling of shame guilt but are those feelings much more important to not to feel than something you want to achieve in your life so basically you have to just push yourself to get out of your comfort zone life starts outside your comfort zone and once you make that switch in your head once you become comfortable with feeling uncomfortable your insecurities don't matter anymore in fact you start to challenge yourself and be like let me just destroy my freaking insecurities and that's how you start to destroy your insecurities by getting out of your comfort zone not giving an f about anything shame guilt whatever those are just feelings and it's also all in our head do you literally think people walk around judging you how foolish or stupid or shameful you look if they have time for that i don't know what the hell are they doing with their life so when i think about it like this this often gives me like this boost and i'm like oh yes true i want to live my life and i want to live my life the best i want to squeeze all the best things out of my life so yes I don't want these insecurities or this self-doubt or stupid feelings stop me from living my life. And then also one thing that also helps me with like insecurities is that I try to connect positive feelings to this insecurity. So for example, if I'm like, okay, if I do this, how will I feel? If I get over of my insecurity, how will I feel when I have done it? How powerful will I feel? For example, example from a dance class. I used to have this insecurity that other people will laugh at me. Don't don't ask me where did it come from but it was just a really big insecurity for me that stopped me from doing certain things when you take a dance class usually those classes are really full after you learn a choreo we usually get divided into smaller groups usually it's two groups but it can also be three groups or even smaller groups and then we dance in those small groups and the rest of the people who don't dance wait 
on the side of the classroom or even in front. That's like the worst. This used to stop me from going to dance classes. And just FYY, I love dancing. So this insecurity stopped me from doing something I really love. So basically what was going on in my head is that, oh my God, we are now in groups and these other people in this room will see me and if I fail, they will laugh at me. I didn't catch this Korean on. And what if I don't perform it perfectly? Or what if I just do one mistake, I step wrong or something and they will see it and they will laugh laugh at me. That's basically what was going on inside my head. Then I started to ask myself, but you really like dancing, right? Yes. And you really like that feeling after you danced and performed because you low-key love performing, right? Yes. So once I had this <laughs> dialogue with myself, I was like, okay, you know what? No one's gonna laugh at me and if they will, whatever. Like, who Cares. Then I just did it and obviously a few times I was shaking a little bit and I was like I'm here don't look at me But then after I started to like do it more and more I realized that yeah Actually, you know what? No one gives a shit because everyone is so busy with themselves So that's a little example and I hope it will help you to visualize again how these insecurities Stop you from living your life and why you should really not care about it because it's really not that serious Most likely the insecurity you have about yourself other people don't realize it They don't even see it and whatever is going on inside of your head is most likely not true. All those scenarios you're having in your head and with your insecurities are most likely not at all true. And also something that might also help you with insecurities is that I like to look at them like you know, like, let's say when you're playing a video game, I don't play them often, but I have played them enough to know what happens in a video game. So you do some task and then you proceed further in levels. Also, view your insecurities the same way. They are literally things that you have to overcome in order to proceed further in your life. Because if you don't overcome that challenge in your life, that insecurity, the things that feel so hard and you are not doing it because of the voices inside of your head, the negativity, the negative self-talk, the self-doubt. If you don't overcome that, that's gonna be the level you're gonna stuck in your life forever. So that's the furthest you're going to advance in your life. So these insecurities that you don't overcome are a limit to your life. That's the furthest you're gonna go in life. We are always our own biggest critics. Everyone is always criticizing themselves the most. For what reason? How is that gonna benefit you? Don't take it so serious. Just be like, well, I don't care if I suck sometimes. It's okay. Don't be so serious in yourself. Life is not so serious. No one's perfect. Do you also go around and criticize other people that hard? And if you don't, then why do you do that yourself? And also, if you have like fear of failure and you are afraid of starting something new in your life, for example, because you're afraid of looking stupid, come on. You're doing something first time in your life. How are you supposed to be perfect in it? How are you supposed to be the best in it if you're doing it for the first time? That's just not possible. If you're doing something for the first time in your life, you're always going to start and you always suck at the start. Learn to live with it. You have to be fine with that. You have to become comfortable with that feeling that sometimes you're gonna look stupid. Sometimes you're gonna look foolish. Sometimes you're gonna do things for the first time in your life. So basically, you just have to be okay with the fact that when you're starting something new, you're going to be bad at it in the beginning. But that's what's required to become good.